What is up guys, my name is Jason Ankin and welcome to my vlog channel. We've got another video entry for you today. Today's video entry is going to be me covering my top 10 books of all time. When I was formulating this list about half an hour ago, I probably could have picked out about 15, but I decided on these 10 books. What makes these 10 books so special is that upon reading them, they've had an impact on my life and they continue to have an impact in my life long term. Um, and it's going to be a nice quick overview and the reason why of a quick overview of each book and the reason why I want to go through these top 10 books is because I want to go through these books individually in more depth in the future. So let's get started. So we're going to be going through these books in descending order from number 10 all the way down to number one, my number one favorite book of all time. So let's get into the first book. The first book is something called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. So this is a book I uh, picked it up through studying this um, personal development coach. His name is Bob Proctor. He's a very, very famous, um, probably one of the most, uh, he's been in the personal development game probably longer than anybody else, at least 50 or 55 years. And he classifies this book as one of his top three books of all time. So if he has studied personal development for somewhat of 50 years, and he considered this one of his top three, it's probably worth reading. And uh, as you can see, it's based upon a quote within the Bible. In the Bible, there's this quote, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And what this book does is it basically explains this single precept or this single aphorism. As you can see, it's a little tiny thin book. It's only about uh, 40 odd pages, 50 odd pages. You can get through this book in one sitting. And what it fundamentally teaches you is that your thinking basically determines uh, your life. It's very simple, your thoughts, you make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, those decisions become your actions, those actions have reactions, and they determine the conditions of your life. So this is one of my top uh, favorite books of all time. Highly recommend it. I will be going, like I said, all of these books, I will be doing deep dives in the future, so I'll be able to get more in depth into all of these books. Um, probably my favorite chapter in the book is the one on visions and ideals. Um, but yes, you can get this as a PDF download because it's an old book. You can go onto the interwebs, the internet, type in as a man thinketh PDF and a free PDF download would, would come up and you can download it onto your phone and start reading it straight away. So this is number 10. So my number nine book of all time is this. It is called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Yes, this book was written 2000 years ago or so in China and it is a military strategy book but on top of that uh, it basically as a sort of martial artist or somebody who gets into business or working and stuff like that it helps with competition you could almost change the title of this book instead of the art of war you could call it the art of competition it basically teaches you how to win and um, so yes this is um, a very very well-known book it's, it's been around for hundreds of well it's been around for thousands of years you know, uh, as you all know, if you watch my channel, I'm an INTJ. INTJ is sometimes referred to as the strategist. So books like this appeal to me a lot. There's a lot of techniques, there's a lot of tactics, there's a lot of strategies and a lot of principles that you can apply in day-to-day -day life to basically uh, help you win. I would use some of the principles in this here book in um, martial arts. Uh, one of the, the best principles that I've learned from this um, in relation to martial arts is that um, when your defense is um, when your defense is perfect, you're, you're invincible. So I've always took that into martial arts and worked on a defensive strategy because if, if no one can break through your defense in, in martial arts, I do jujitsu. If no one can break through your defense, then they can't beat you and you increase the probability of success. Uh, my favorite chapter in this book is probably the very, very first chapter, The Lane of Plans, because it goes through like an assessment of how you can ascertain victory. Um, and it asks these uh, six or is it seven questions. It says, therefore in your deliberations when seeking to determine the military conditions, let them be made the basis of comparison in this wise. And it lays out seven questions that you must ask. And based on these seven questions, based on the answers of these seven questions, you can ascertain within a battle who's going to win. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very important book, uh, historically significant, 
uh, infinitely applicable in multiple different areas of your life. So I highly recommend this book. This is my number nine book. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, book number eight. So we're going to cover a book called The Intridion. This is called The Intridion. The translation of this means the manual. And uh, it was a book, um, this is a, a book in Stoicism, another really old book, probably written around about 2000 years ago. Uh, this is a really, really well-known philosopher called Epictetus. And Epictetus had a student uh, who basically wrote down a number of Epictetus's sayings. And this is basically the, the summation, if you will, of uh, the teachings of Epictetus's philosophy of Stoicism. And what's cool about this book, it is the basis of modern day cognitive behavioral therapy. So modern day cognitive behavioral therapy originated with this guy called Albert Ellis. And he created this thing called rational emotive behavioral therapy. And Albert Ellis says that he got the main principles for his uh, rational emotive behavioral therapy from this book, um, Epictetus' Intridion. It is literally just these little single sayings, um, little quotes um, that you can just read in a couple of seconds or a minute or two. And it just teaches you a fundamental lesson of your psychology. Um, it's essentially how to think, how to think in relation to circumstances. You know, so you're an individual um, and you, you live within circumstances. Your circumstances change. So how do you maintain or how do you uh, cope with these changes? And this little book teaches you um, some thinking strategies that you can use to basically cope in all circumstances. Um, I think the main principle that Epictetus teaches is that um, you should not concern yourself with things that are not within your control. You can only control your thoughts, you can only control your um, impulses, and you can only control your actions. Everything else outside of you is fundamentally outside of your control. So what you should learn to do is learn to adapt what's within your control to circumstances to help you cope um, essentially as full spectrum when things are good and when things are bad so you can cope uh, the full range of what a human can experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is my number eight book. Okay, so my number seven book is a book called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. Now this again is, was written, I think, around about 1911. This is the basis of um, the, the modern term known as the secret or the law of attraction. The woman who created that book, The Secret, if you've ever seen this, the, the Secret book or the, uh, or the movie, um, she got the inspiration from to write that uh, book or to produce that movie from this book uh, by Wallace D. Waddles, The Science of Getting Rich, which is really, it's a really strange kind of book. It's called The Science of Getting Rich. You would think it's something to do with economics, but it isn't. It's to do with metaphysics. And uh, it basically teaches you uh, how to use your mind to basically, very similar to the book As A Man Thinketh. It's a, it's a new thought. You could call it a mental science book, very similar to the As A Man Thinketh. Um, but this book had a huge impact on me. When I read this book, I felt like I had been given access to a whole new world. Uh, I could, uh, I will be looking to do a more deep dive into this book. This book had a huge impact on me. I would say that this one book has had the single largest impact on me in comparison to any other book that I've ever read. It completely transformed my life and changed my life. But basically, it talks about this idea that <clears throat> there's this thing called there is a science of getting rich and he basically says the science of getting rich is thinking and acting in a certain way and then there's a chapter called thinking in a certain way which is basically about goal setting or setting a vision for your life and then there's another chapter called acting in, in a certain way and that's basically acting in a way that aligns with your vision because if your thoughts and your actions are aligned then it's going to have a cause and effect relationship and produce the corresponding results. When I learned this, it blew my freaking mind. It completely blew my mind. Um, I'd never been taught this in my life that you can use your minds and your actions to change your conditions of your life. And uh, when, I, when I first read this book, it had the hugest impact on me. And I'm going to get into that at some point in the future. So I highly recommend this book, um, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. Um, which is the basis of the modern day 
secret or the law of attraction. Okay, book number five. Right, book number five is a book called The New Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. And this is another book that I have learned through studying this uh, personal development coach called Bob Proctor. He recommended to study this book. And uh, this is probably one of the top three personal development books ever written in the history of the world. I think to date this is sold, it says here uh, 30 million people have purchased this book. And uh, this is the new updated version of the original. I do have a copy of the original, but I prefer the new updated one because it has extra techniques and it uh, goes into a little bit more detail. And uh, I really, really love it. But it has the basis. So it was written by this guy called Maxwell Maltz, who was a, he was basically a surgeon and he would do surgery, surgery on people. And he realized that some people would come out of the surgery with a psychological change and some people wouldn't. So he realized that his surgery wasn't the key to making people happy. He realized that there was an underlying um, psychological basis for people's uh, view of themselves. So what he then did is he started to look into psychology and he developed this sub psychology, which he nicknamed self image psychology. And if you want to understand how your mind works, um, this is pretty much the only book you're ever going to need to read because it teaches you a very, very basic, very, very fundamental way that your brain works and how you can manage it. So the first chapter basically goes into what is called the self image. So it explains what the self image is. The second chapter goes into the cybernetic aspect of it. So the first chapter is the psycho part of it, the mind. And then the second chapter is on the cybernetic aspect. And then the following 13 chapters is, is just techniques to help you change your self image, which is essentially a program that your subconscious takes on board and basically that becomes your natural thoughts and behavior, which again determines the conditions of your life. But as a, as a fundamental understanding of psychology, how your mind works, you have a mind guys, remember this, you've got a brain and you need to know how to operate that thing in your lifetime. I would highly recommend if someone wants to understand how their brain works and how their mind works, this would be the one book that I would recommend. I've studied sports psychology at degree level this book is far better um, than the stuff that I've studied. Academic, sports science, teaching you how to improve the performance of athletes, this is better. So I highly recommend this book. This is my number five book. Yeah, so I just realized the last book I was calling it my number five book it was actually my number six. The number five book of all time is a book called The Noble Eightfold Path way to the end of suffering so things are going to get start to get a little bit deeper after this point so this is a book written by forgive my pronunciation i'm northern irish i can barely speak english um baiku bodhai you can correct me in the comments if that's wrong i don't care right but anyway so this is a book called the noble eight full path the way to the end of suffering it is a buddhist book and buddhism follows this system of practice called the Noble Eightfold Path. I found this book I was reading, um, I have a copy of a book called the Dhammapada and the Dhammapada is basically one of the most uh, fundamental teachings of Buddhist, um, Buddhist philosophy. And within one of the chapters I heard of this thing called the Noble Eightfold Path and I was wondering what is this Eightfold Path? So I basically went researching it on the Google and I found out about this thing called the Noble Eightfold Path. And then I basically went on Amazon and started looking for a book for it. And I find this. Now, when this book arrived in my house, I probably read this three times back to back in one week. And I was like, I was basically on the edge of becoming a Buddhist because again, this blew my mind because it taught me, it's on Buddhism is like this philosophy if it was like an, an alien culture that's 3,000 years into the future came to planet earth and taught us their psychology of mind that's what buddhism is it's so advanced it's so um beautiful it's so rational it's so objective and um, it's not dogmatic even buddhism discourages you don't believe this you have to apply it and practice it yourself um, but this is a, an amazing synopsis again. You can read this book in probably two or three days. 
and each chapter is just dedicated to each factor within the Eightfold Path. And uh, it basically teaches you the moral system within Buddhism, it teaches you the sort of um, meditation practices, and it teaches you the practice of wisdom, which is this kind of the threefold path of Buddhism, the moral training, the meditation, and the training of wisdom. And this book impacted me so much that I nearly became a Buddhist, but I held back because uh, I didn't want to um, get too impulsive and get into something that maybe I would probably end up giving up at some point in the future. But I have never stopped learning from this book. Uh, it keeps teaching me new things and it helps me understand so much more. By reading this book, I understand so much more. See, all, all of the, the modern psychology, the modern the science of psychology um, as a discipline, all of the individual disciplines within psychology, this one book kicks all of their asses. Like, and look how small it is. It's so concise and yet it's so complete. It, it, it is absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, this is my number five book. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, book number four. So book number four is a book called The Tao Te Ching by this individual called Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu is this guy called, it just, this means just a wise man, I believe. And the Tao Te Ching is basically the book of the, so Ching means book, Te means virtue, and Tao means way. So this is the book of the virtuous way. Now, I have studied this book for years. Um, I used to read this book every single day for probably two years nonstop. As you can see, it's got a very dirty <laughs> fingerprint because I was constantly just flicking through and flicking through and flicking through and flick, flicking through. I have done videos in the past on my uh, interest in Taoist philosophy. My, my views have changed. A little and um, I had my views haven't changed about Taoism and um, but I can get into that more into the future and um, but yeah this is one of my favorite books of all time it is 81 little tiny chapters and um, teaching you a fundamental or multiple lessons about life and you could almost just take one of these chapters that has maybe 10 lines and that could be the basis of your whole life um, just that one chapter, but this has 81 chapters, so this is stacked with wisdom. I think it's the fifth most translated book in the world, um, and it's sometimes attributed or, or said to be the wisest book ever written. And uh, one of my favorite um, chapters is probably, um, well, I have a lot of favorite chapters. I don't want to pick one just now, but we can get into that more in the future. So this is my number four book. The Tao Te Ching, Chinese philosophy written 2,600 years ago by this individual called Lao Tzu, aka the wise man. Okay, book number three. So this is a book called Napoleon Hill's Keys to Success. The 17 principles of personal achievement. Yes, people say that life doesn't come with a manual and I would disagree with this because this book debunks that claim. Napoleon Hill was a personal development um, researcher, lived um, at the early part of the 20th century. <clears throat> and the claim is that he researched over 500 of America's wealthiest men, including 16,000 uh, people in total, because obviously you want to research successful people and you want to also research people who are failures. So you know what to do and know what not to do. So after 20 years of research, Napoleon Hill produced this set of principles called the 17 Principles of Personal Achievement, which he put into a book called The Law of Success, which he wrote in 1927. Uh, fast forward to the early 1990s and uh, the Napoleon Hill Foundation produced this book. And it is a, basically a condensed version of The Law of Success with all of the examples and all of the stories and stuff removed from the book. Uh, it, just leaves you with the practical step-by-step -step things that you're meant to do on a day-to-day -day basis to improve your life. So yes, each chapter basically covers uh, one of the principles, as you can see here. And uh, at the back, there's a summary of each of the chapters. So you can just quick, a quick as a quick reference, you can read uh, the summary in the back. Um, 
but yeah, this is a, a really, really useful book. It's a very, very practical book. I describe it as like an oracle. So if you have a problem in your life, and you can pick up this book and without a doubt you will find a solution that will help you in that circumstance so yes i highly recommend this book this is my top three napoleon hill's keys to success okay so book number two the sack my second favorite book of all time things are about to get a little deep right now so this is a book called the Kabbalion. So this was, uh, it's also got this other book called The Emerald Tablet of Hermes and the Kabbalion. So it's a combined two in one book. And this was written by a guy called William Walker Atkinson in the early part of the 20th century. It actually claims to be um, written by these people called the Three Initiates. But through research, people generally agree upon that this is a pseudonym for the individual William Walker Atkinson. Now William Walker Atkinson has produced probably over a hundred books. He's with I do doubt one of my best authors, favorite authors of all time. I love all of his books. I intend on studying as many of them as I possibly can. But basically what this book does is it covers these things called the seven hermetic principles. Um, and each principle teaches you basically about a fundamental law of the universe. Um, Things like cause and effect, things like the law of opposites, things like the law of rhythm and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into too much detail about it. I will leave that for a later date. But this is one of the most important books that I've ever read. If there was a zombie apocalypse and I had to literally grab my top three books, there's no shadow of a doubt this would be going in my rucksack and I would be taking this book with me. I would not leave you know i would not leave this book behind i would take this book with me it is super vital on top of that it is probably the most popular book in what's called neo-occultism it's the most common most popular book um in that kind of movement um it's it's a classic it's absolutely brilliant and uh, it just teaches you basically this fundamental idea is how your mind um relates to the universe and that's what i'm saying it's very deep i'm going to leave this for a later date because it requires a deep dive each chapter requires its own video and uh so i'm going to leave that to a later date but this is my number two book of all time the Kabbalion by the three initiates aka william walker atkinson right so my number one book of all time this book is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I study this book pretty much every single day. Um, I'm not going to go into too much details about this just yet. Um, I will leave that for a much later date because this requires again another deep dive. Each chapter in this book needs an explanation and the whole history of this book, the whole history of this philosophy um, is vitally, vitally important. And um, so it is a book called The Divine Pymander by Hermes Mercurius Trismegistus. And this is the, G the classical John Everett translation. This book was translated in 1650 from a book that was written in 300 AD in, the, in Alexandria, which is in Egypt. This book shouldn't be here. We shouldn't have access to this book today. Um, due to the Catholic Church's rise to power, they tried to wipe this out. So the fact that we, me, a humble individual like myself, can get access to a book like this, it is absolutely amazing that this has been able to survive and um, because this was really, really, um, a really, really persecuted, attacked uh, philosophy. Like I said, the Roman Catholic Empire tried to destroy and wipe this out. But yes, the claim is that this was a book written by this individual called Hermes Mercurius Trismegistus. Whether he was a real individual or whether he was some ancient philosopher or sage, that is disputed. Nobody really knows the truth. Um, this is a hugely deep book and it talks about this thing called the Hermetic Philosophy. 
So this is the, the main hermetic corpus of books. Uh, it is 17 books, and it is basically a, a number of discourses between uh, this individual called Hermes and a number of his sons. I would actually consider this to be, in the past I mentioned that my core religious philosophy, if you will, is a, um, a religious philosophy called Taoism. Remember that book, the Tao Te Ching. I have now since um, orientated myself more towards the study of this. So I'm most definitely going to go into a deep dive of this book and uh, get into much, much uh, greater detail explaining it. It's a steep learning curve, guys. I'm not going to be able to explain this in one or two minutes. The amount of history connected to this book is staggering. And it is essentially the basis of modern day science. Um, the Hermetic philosophy produced these things called the Hermetic arts, which, were, which include magic, alchemy, and astrology. Magic became modern day psychology. Alchemy became modern day natural science, i.e. physics, chemistry, biology. And astrology became modern day cosmology and astronomy. So the very basis of modern science can be found at least to a certain degree in this philosophy and, and uh, the hermetic arts. But I will get into this in some point in the future. This is without a doubt my number one book of all time. Like I said, and just like the last one, if there was a zombie apocalypse and I had to grab one or two books and deal, this would be going in my rucksack, no shadow of a doubt. So that is it guys, thanks for watching. So yes guys, that is it. That was me covering my top 10 books of all time. Remember, like I said, I could have added five more books onto that list. Um, it's very, very hard to select your top 10 books. The reason why I covered those top 10 books specifically is because I want to be doing deep dives into each of those individual books one at a time, maybe on a chapter by chapter basis. So right there in those 10 books, we have probably hundreds of videos that I could just go on and on and on and on and on about. And like I said, I probably got about another 100, 150 books uh, in my possession, and uh, but I wouldn't be going through all of them. But these are my, these are the cream of the crop. As I said, the cream of the crop rises to the top. And these are by far um, some of the best books that I've ever read in my life. And what I mean by that is they've had an impact on me. After reading the book, I look at the world differently. I look at myself differently. Um, and I continue to learn from them long term. So yes, guys, thanks for watching. My name is Jason Ankin. This is my vlog channel. Remember, we're heading, trying to hit that 1,000 subscriber base. So subscribe, like, comment, watch this video to the end, share it, all of that jazz. And I will see you next time, guys. Bye.